To determine the electric fields in this question, it's going to be helpful to remember that when you have large conducting sheets, then the electric field, as derived by Gauss's law, is equal to the surface charge density divided by 2 times a constant. You'll notice that the question gives you the surface charge density, and so we'll be using that value in order to calculate the electric field. Let's go above the sheets first here. We can mark an arbitrary point located above the sheets, perhaps right here. And because there are two sheets, there will be two electric fields. We note that each sheet is positive, so we have to determine the direction of the electric field based on the fact that the sheets are positively charged. You might remember that in order to determine the direction of an electric field, you imagine that you place a positive test charge at the location of interest. So, for example, if we place a hypothetical positive test charge right here, we know that this upper sheet, because it's positively charged, would repel that positive test charge. So there would be an electric force pushing the positive test charge upward. And that upward vector actually indicates the direction of the electric field as well. So we're going to call this E, and we might just call it EU. The U can stand for the upper sheet. Now, similarly, if we place a positive test charge at the same location, the lower sheet, which we might label L, because it's positive, would also create a repulsive electrostatic force that pushes that positive test charge upward. So not only does EU point upward, but EL also will be pointing upward. So now we're ready to compute the total electric field. Because both of these electric fields point in the same direction, we can simply add them together. So in part A, we might say that the total electric field, and this will be above the sheets, will equal the electric field produced by the upper sheet plus the electric field produced by the lower sheet. Now for each of those electric fields, again, we're going to be using this expression to compute the electric field. So we would have the surface charge density of the upper sheet divided by 2 times the constant plus the surface charge density of the lower sheet divided by 2 times the constant. Now, these are identical distributions of positive charge. So in fact, the surface charge density is equal for both the upper and lower sheets. So we don't even have to use these subscripts of U and L. We can just use the symbol sigma, since they are the same value. So now we can add these together. They have a common denominator. So sigma plus sigma is 2 sigma over 2 epsilon. The 2's cancel. And we are left with our final expression for the net electric field. We simply plug in the given surface charge density, which has a value of 1.77 times 10 to the minus 22 coulombs per meter squared, divided by the constant. This can be looked up in your textbook. It's equal to 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. And then we have this strange unit of coulombs squared per newton meter squared. So we shall pick up our calculators and enter this value in. And when we do so, we will get positive 2 times 10 to the minus 11. And now for the unit of electric field, we recall that that will come out into newtons per coulomb. If we were asked for unit vector notation, remember both fields were pointing upward. And so the net electric field will be pointing in the positive y direction. We can indicate that by using the notation of j hat to indicate the y direction. So this would be the correct answer to part a. We can move on to part b here, and this time we're going between the sheets. It's very scandalous. And so let's put a positive test charge, maybe right here, any arbitrary location between the sheets. A positive test charge would be repelled by the upper sheet, so we would have an electric field pointing downward. We can label that EU. And then that positive test charge would be repelled by the lower sheet. So it would be being pushed upward. And that would be EL. Ah, now take note. We have one electric field upward, the other one downward. Remember, the magnitudes are equal because the surface charge densities are also equal. So in fact, in part B, the upward electric field is canceled by the downward electric field. And the correct answer then would be zero. So it's really just a conceptual point. We can say that the total electric field between the sheets is simply equal to zero newtons per coulomb. And again, that's because the upward field and downward field cancel each other out. Finally, moving on to part C, it's very similar to part A. We would put a positive test charge below the sheets. 
The upper sheet would repel that positive test charge downward. So that would be the direction of the electric field produced by the upper sheet. The lower sheet would also repel that positive test charge downward. And so there is the electric field produced by that sheet. They're both pointing downward. Of course, downward is typically the negative direction. So in this case, in order to get the total electric field below the sheets, we're basically going to have negative E upper minus E lower. Notice the two negative signs because they're pointing downward. Using the same equation as above with sigma divided by 2 epsilon, we would have negative sigma over 2 epsilon minus sigma over 2 epsilon. We have a common denominator, so we can add the numerators. We get negative, or actually subtract them, negative 2 sigma over 2 epsilon. The 2s once again cancel, and we're left with negative sigma over epsilon. It's the same values as in part A. It's the 1.77 times 10 to the minus 22, whoa. And that was given in coulombs per meter squared. Don't forget the negative sign is still in the expression. And then we have our epsilon value. And again, that's got that funky unit of coulombs squared per newton meter squared. You're going to get the same magnitude, but the direction is different. It's now negative, and that's because it's pointing downward. So we end up with negative 2 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons per coulomb. And again, if you need unit vector notation, just go ahead and say j hat, because they were both pointing along the y direction downward. So this would be the correct answer to part C.